Um, there was one incident that really stuck in my mind. The camp was bordered in barbed wire, which I can't stand to this day. And there were guard towers around it, and in these guard towers were guards with rifles. And if you got too close to this fence, you were likely to get shot. And I think some people hung laundry on the fences. And one night, this teenager came into the barracks screaming because her mother had gotten too close to the fence and been shot. Um, about 10 years ago, I found notes that my father had written to my mother in the camp. I hadn't discovered these before. And since my father had died in the camp, um, when I was six, he died in January 1944, I was not really familiar with my father's handwriting. And I discovered these and couldn't read them. And I had been in touch with Bernd Horstmann from the Bergen-Belsen Memorial some years before when I had visited there. And he had sent me some materials. And I asked him if he could possibly look at these and transcribe them, which he did. And we went back and forth again because having some familiarity with my family, I realized that there were some things that we had to alter. So I had these wonderful transcriptions in German, which I do read. And then my daughter Peggy, who is here today too, who knows German and a friend, translated them into English. And you'll be able to see this in this book, which I'll leave on the table out in the hallway, where you can look at these notes. And there is one particularly that is very moving. It's the last one there that my father wrote to my mother on the anniversary of their 10th wedding in October 1944. And the great love that he expresses to her there and the great sense of hope of what will happen after the war and that maybe possibly they might even have another child. And you might like to look at these letters. There are also pictures of family from uh, early times and then from current times. And you're also welcome to meet some of my family members, of course. Um, I recall that when the train was stopped, it was a spring day. And others have described, and you've seen the pictures of kind of the sloping landscape there. And I got out of this train when the train was stopped, and I saw the greenery and the wildflowers. And it was wonderful, because suddenly I was seeing things in color. And everything that I'd remembered about the camp was black and white, except that I had some sense that those barracks maybe were green, and I did have that corroborated later. And it was wonderful to have that feeling. That must have been early on after the train had stopped because some soldiers came along and told us to get back in the train. Well, these were not the American liberators. These maybe were, there were still German soldiers around. And later, the Americans came, and I don't really recall that incident, unfortunately, when you wonderful men came there and freed us from this. And, uh, but I know it was a very happy day, because you not only freed us, you gave us our lives, and therefore, as others have said, the lives of our families. Um, life after World War II. Um, my mother and I lived for seven years in El Salvador where my uncle lived. And that was because my uncle had invited us to come there and see where we would go with our lives. And um, in that time, my mother worked there. She had worked in Germany. She had been trained in business and she knew five languages. So she worked as a multilingual secretary. I went to the American school learned English and Spanish, maintained the German, forgot the Dutch. And um, so and later on in high school, I took some French. But um, later on, after raising a family, I learned about mediation. And that seemed to me the perfect thing. And I'll just go back to one thing. When I was a little girl in El Salvador, I'd see the first star at night in the sky, and there was the kids would say, oh, if you make a wish on that first star, then maybe your wish will come true. And here was a little seven or eight-year-old who would wish for peace. Well, most seven or eight-year-olds wouldn't wish for that, but 
you can understand maybe why I did. So anyway, um, about 27, 28 years ago, I was invited to join and take training in mediation in a nearby county and started my career as a mediator. And that is what I have been doing for many years, started my own business too. And I find that mediation is a way that we can work to um, listen to people without judging each other and trying to understand each other, which are steps to help people resolve their issues with each other in a non-confrontational and a peaceable and a healing way. And when people are able to resolve conflict with each other through mutual respect and understanding, they have a model for resolving other issues that come up in their lives. One by one, group by group, I hope that our work creates expanding ripples of peace in the lives of people. And I'm hoping, too, that, you know, you have heard a great deal here about don't forget the Holocaust. Remember history, so not to repeat it. I urge you to go further than that. Get involved. Be active in overcoming and preventing the Holocausts of today. There are organizations you can join. There are activities you can participate in, whether in your own community or on a national or international level. And do get involved. And today is a very special day, a day and all these days, a day of gratitude and appreciation to you who have given us liberty and our lives. Thank you.